In this video, I'm going to show you how to query web API in Power Apps using fetch XML and OData syntax. Now, what is the fetch XML? Fetch XML is basically a proprietary XML based language which is used to query the backend Dataverse table. Now, I'm in the Maker portal in Power Apps. So I will navigate to the tables and I'll open one of the uh, stock standard table available within the Dataverse, so called as Contact. Now here, in order to use the Web API, you need to first understand and get the URL extracted. So in order to get the URL uh, for say specific tables, say contact, now here, as you see over here, I can retrieve all the records in the contact table. Now this is in the interface, right? But how, do, how can we do it programmatically? So here you see something called as tools. So if we click on tools, then here you can see API link to table data. The moment you click on API link to table data, then it will open a URL. And if you closely watch this URL, this is basically your tenant name, slash API, slash data, slash V9.2, slash something, right? Now let's uh, evaluate this URL one by one, and then we will go into the data part, okay? So let me copy this URL and let me break it down for you. So this is, uh, I'm just pasting this URL in the notepad. So if you just dissect this URL, as you see over here, first is a protocol. And then there is this entire part is like the entire environment name for you. So Giri Dev is the environment URL. And then you have slash API slash data and V9.2, and then you have something over here. Now, this part is called as a set name, okay? Now, how do you get the set name? So again, going back to the Maker portal, you can click on tools and copy the set name. So whenever API is called, it always references the set name. So I'll just copy the set name and paste it over here just to show you. Okay, see, this is the set name, so slash contacts. So if we take this URL and if we just type slash contacts, then what it will do, it will retrieve all the contacts record within your application. So this is how you can query. Now, the goal is basically to use fetch XML query. Now, in order to do a fetch XML query, we need to uh, first extract the fetch XML item. Now, so take for example, uh, let me show you in for another table. So I have this table called as uh, world app. Okay. Now world app has world table in it and it has uh, account and contacts record in it. So if I click on contacts, you can see there are eight record in my active contacts. And if you click on all contacts, you will see more records, 17 records. Now, Let's uh, run a query. Now here, uh, if I see over here, I can see that there is an email address which has someone in it, or maybe it has, there is some email address which has gmail.com, okay? Now I can click on edit filter over here, and I can say, I can say email address, email contains the word gmail in it let me see how many records exist now if you see here there are two records which exist so what we have done we have actually uh, filtered this record so if i click on edit filter again then i can download the fetch xml the underlying code behind it so if i click on download fetch xml it will then download this file. Let me open this file for you. Say, so let me open this in Notepad. Or maybe Visual Studio Code, that's fine for me. I'll just say, okay. 
and then it will open Visual Studio Code for me. Now here, let me zoom this a bit and let me just do a right click and yeah. So this is how the fetch XML will look like, okay? Now the fetch XML, which is generated over here uh, is basically a query. Okay, so if you see here, fetch version 1.2 format mapping, no lock, and then it will talk about entity, which entity you're referring, and then it will say which attribute you're referring and what kind of attributes you want. And here, these are set of attributes which will get uh, generated based on the column which you have already selected in the while building those fetch XML. Now, this is a filter attribute which says when the email address is uh, like gmail.com and then this is how it has generated the query okay so the r condition was basically email address uh, like gmail okay like it says it contains gmail in it okay now what we can do we can take this entire query and we can uh, run this in the browser okay so uh, let me copy this so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna I'll, I'll not save this okay i'll just copy this as it is and i'll show you what happens if you run like this okay so in order to run a fetch xml query what you need to do you need to just type in the url which we just copied over here slash api v 9.2 slash contacts till contacts so if you type till contacts it will retrieve all the records okay then if i just type question mark fetch xml equal to and then paste the fetch xml okay so let me copy the fetch xml so let me know this So if you copy this fetch XML, then let's see what happens. Okay. Now, if you see here, it has executed this fetch XML and it has given you only two rows. Now, why it has given only two rows? Because it has executed this fetch XML and the fetch XML has a criteria condition which says that the email address contains Gmail in it, then only retrieve those records. Now, if you want to view this record clearly, as, as you see over here, this is not pretty much readable because this is in a JSON format. What you can do, you can copy this entire code and use JSON Weaver or any JSON Weaver you want. Paste it, go to the viewer, see the value. You have two values, zeroth value, zeroth value, uh, the email address is nancy at gmail.com and it will retrieve only these many columns contact id email address full name state code telephone and you can pick and choose this column so if you do not want to get all the records in the system then you can use fetch xml to filter down that record okay so as you see over here if i write this as a fetch xml now if i don't use like this and if i just execute the contacts okay then it will retrieve all the record okay with no conditions in it i'll copy this entire json and now paste it and see how many record it returned so as you see over here it returned almost 17 records now it retrieved all the record and if you see from a column perspective it has retrieved all the column as well which is quite inefficient when you use a programming language to uh, retrieve the data because those all fields you may never use in your application so it is always advisable to cut down the column name which and restrict to whatever you need from a schema perspective and also from a data perspective you're going to filter that based on some condition which we have already accomplished using fetch xml now the fetch xml which i created i just went into the application and then i put some condition over here and then I clicked on the filter and I downloaded the fetch XML. Now there is uh, an XRM toolbox tool uh, 
which you can use. It's called as uh, Fetch XML Builder. So in Fetch XML Builder, if you open this XRM toolbox, you can actually write down your uh, query and then it will generate the Fetch XML. And this Fetch XML, you can directly copy in the application. So that's it, folks. This is how uh, basically I just want to highlight you uh, that in order to run Fetch XML, you need to copy the entire API data format and put a question mark. And remember, this Fetch XML out of this X is capital. Okay. Now, if you remove this X and make it small, and if you run this, then it will not execute. Okay. So that one thing you need to keep in mind, this X is capital. And if you put a capital X, then you will get a correct record. So that's it, folks. This is how uh, you can run Fetch XML using O data syntax using Web API to retrieve data from Dataverse. Thanks for watching.